power user. It's a term we used to use to describe people who use their smartphones all the time, for everything. And it's those people that the original Samsung Galaxy Note was built to satisfy back in 2011. But in 2018, everyone is a power user. And so the Galaxy Note has had to adapt. I've reviewed the Galaxy Note nine times. Nine times? Nine times. I've covered astronomical successes and spectacular flameouts. And I'll tell you now that with only one exception, the Galaxy Note 9 is as close to power user perfection as Samsung has ever gotten. I covered the basics and the hands-on last week, folks, but to recap, the Note 9 is a wider, heavier, thicker slab that takes the Galaxy Note back to its roots as a two-handed behemoth, more miniature tablet than oversized smartphone. I compliment Samsung for bucking industry trends here. Every year, the phones I review get thinner, and the anger in the comments gets louder. Some folks wouldn't mind a thicker phone, as long as it means having a bigger battery. Well, the Note 9 delivers that. And for the same price as an iPhone X, it also retains the headphone jack that Apple omits and builds in an S Pen that no other phone has. Normally, I save pricing and conclusions for the end of the video, but why put it off? Unless you're all in on Apple's ecosystem, if you're going to spend $1,000 on a phone, the Galaxy Note 9 is the one you should be buying. That's not to say there's no room for improvement. The big chassis and a lack of tactile cues make the fingerprint sensor tough to feel out for the first few days. If you don't want to use that, the iris scanner is still here, but it's also still pretty slow. And Samsung's virtual assistant, Bixby, is still not great. It couldn't find the closest Dunkin' Donuts, even when I was standing inside of one. It couldn't understand the phrase, wake me up at 8 a.m. until it got an update. And when I used it to search for a convenience store, it got me lost in the middle of Brooklyn. To no one's great surprise, this is not the Gold Street Market. Samsung stresses that it's still unfinished software until the Note 9 starts shipping. Who knows, maybe it'll magically get great on launch day. But Bixby's track record is not good, and gives me no reason to expect it'll ever be good enough to justify having its own button, which you still cannot reassign, and which you will still constantly press by accident. Elsewhere, this phone is a story of familiar strengths. All the high points of the Galaxy S9 have been imported to the Note 9, and in some cases, improved. If you're looking for a better, brighter, or more accurate smartphone display, you will not find it. And Samsung managed to blow it up to a huge 6.4 inches without resorting to a notch. The silicon is top shelf, and while the option to go up to 8 gigs of RAM and 512 gigs of storage is excessive for all but the hardest core, well, the hardest core is who this is for. For the record, I reviewed the lower tier version and had no performance issues of any kind, even while playing the new Fortnite for Android. The phone does employ a revised cooling system with several improvements over the Note 8, thanks to Samsung for these technical details. But like any phone, it will still get warm under a heavy load. I don't recommend cooling it off in the rain when it does, but the IP68 rating means that if you do, it should survive just fine. The Note 9's cameras also copy the S9's, and that's good news, because with the exception of the predictably bad portrait mode, these are some of the best cameras you can ask for. Where the Note improves, it does so with AI. And look, I hate the AI buzzword, the parlor tricks the phone does, you know, oh, I think I'm looking at food, so I'm going to up the saturation. Yeah, I, I can take or leave it. What's impressive is taking a photo and then getting told by the Note 9 that someone might have blinked or that the shot was blurry. You might want to take it again. That's the kind of feature that helps real people shooting photos in the real world. These are not real people in the real world. They're tech bloggers in a fake living room at Samsung's New York headquarters. But I'm showing you these shots because they're all self-portraits I took remotely with the new Bluetooth-enabled S Pen. You just pop out the pen, you point the phone at yourself, and click away. And then there's media control. 
I thought I'd never use the pen for this, but one day I was doodling while listening to Spotify on the very loud speakers, and I realized I could skip tracks with the S Pen button without really getting away from what I was doing. If the S Pen is to the note as a mouse is to a computer, it's kind of like Samsung just added a whole extra button here. I do wish Samsung would address some loose ends that have been around for way too long. See, every year since 2013, I've renewed the lease on my apartment with a Galaxy Note. And every year, it's a little more complicated than it should be. I shouldn't have to go download an app from Adobe to sign a contract. That app should be built in, out of the box. Also, the fact that I never know whether an app is going to recognize the hover shortcuts drives me nuts. I mean, Android is inconsistent to a degree, and I get it, but the least Samsung could do is make sure all of its own apps are S Pen optimized. It's kind of like the new version of Samsung DeX. It's great that you can use the Note 9 as a faux desktop computer in a pinch, and it works well, but it still feels kind of like a pet project, or at least a way to push people into buying a $50 adapter that, in my view, should probably come in the box with a $1,000 smartphone. The last big point is one you've been asking about since I unboxed the Note 9. This is one of the biggest batteries you can find on a mainstream smartphone today, and it definitely lasts longer than the one in the Note 8. When I checked with Andrew Martinek at Android Central, he called his Note 9's endurance good enough for a full day without being worried, but he also said that it's no champion. And while that might sound vague, I know just where he's coming from. See, I've used phones with truly legendary battery life, like the old Moto Z Play or the Huawei Mate 10 Pro, phones that would have more than half a charge left after a 16-hour day. And the Note 9 doesn't quite get there. Yes, I know, there are static side-by-side -side battery tests that come to a different conclusion, and if you put stock in those folks, great. All I can do is show you my usage so you can compare your own to mine and tell you that after six years of reviewing phones, the Note 9 battery strikes me as very good, but you're not going to get two days out of it on a single charge unless you do some really aggressive power management. It's just that for such a big phone and such a big battery, I did expect a bit more. When I started this review, I mentioned that the Note 9 is the closest the line has gotten to perfection with one exception. Well, folks, that exception is the Galaxy Note 4. It's the phone I see most often brought up by nostalgic Note owners, and while I wouldn't want to go back to its overwrought software or its old camera, I do miss the fact that I could replace its battery or throw it around without worrying about breaking it. Because no matter how strong the Gorilla Glass on the Note 9 is, the fact remains that it's still a glass phone and it's gonna get scratched up pretty easily. So protect it with a special case from Tech 21. Tech 21's new cases for the Note 9 pack impact absorbing materials called Flex Shock and Bullet Shield. They're more than just intense names. They keep your phone protected from drops of up to three and a half meters. And Tech 21 drop tests its cases 20 times to ensure durable, long lasting protection. Get your Tech 21 case for the Note 9 or almost any phone at the link in the description below. And thanks to Tech21 for sponsoring this video. So, is the Note 9 for you? Well, look, if you're not in a place where you can toss 10 Benjamins at a phone, you can get 80% of what the Note 9 offers for half the price with a Galaxy S9, or a Pixel 2, or a OnePlus 6. But if you still consider yourself a power user in 2018, someone who's investing in a do-everything pocket computer instead of just another smartphone, well, I'll go ahead and say it again. If you're going to drop $1,000 on any phone, the Galaxy Note 9 is the one that deserves it. Call me crazy, folks, but you may have some opinions of your own about this. Share them in the comments below, and be sure to subscribe to The Mr. Mobile on YouTube so you don't miss more coverage on mobile technology from Samsung and others as we get ready for the IFA 2018 trade show in Berlin. And if you want more Mr. Mobile every week, follow me on Instagram at the Mr. Mobile. Until next time, thanks for watching, and stay mobile, my friends.